Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome into Purple Daily here. I'm Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff, and we appreciate everyone who has subscribed to our podcast feed, Apple, Spotify, scorenorth.com, and all the five-star ratings, and also our YouTube page, youtube.com slash scorenorth. You can click that subscribe button and get daily Vikings discussions dropped into your feed, and you can uh, hang out with us in the comments section where we are floating through and... Uh, agreeing disagreeing arguing some people think the judge's an idiot some people think that i'm an idiot you're both right we're both idiots i'm only someone an idiot i haven't gotten full idiot yet well people think you're an idiot because of your one, tom one, brady, tom brady one thing though, that's only one you guys have so many more than me there's I'm... plenty more meat on the idiot bone here we correct will. but uh fridays mean a trip through purple reddit what's it officially called skull reddit skull reddit yep so uh throw one at us here declan you there's one it. that pertains to uh potentially kirk cousins here all right so apparently people are betting on Bills quarterback Josh Allen to win NFL MVP. Where's the laugh track? That's absurd. It's absolutely, it is absurd. And I, I, I mean, know Stephon people, Diggs will help him. And for but. sure, there's a lot of people buying in on the Bills mafia, and I get that. But Josh Allen, in, front, in, in terms of my uneducated quarterback view, is awful. So I don't understand how that works. But anyway, while sports, this is from Syracuse.com too, by the way. While sports books aren't expecting the kind of jump in production to put Allen into the mix to enter NFL MVP in 2020, his 50 to 1 odds would rank 15th behind superstars like Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Betters like the value, and he's putting their money on the 24 year old Bills quarterback. According to odds checker spokesman Pete Watt, there are more bets on Allen to win MVP right now than any other player. Mahomes is currently the favorite to win MVP at plus 400, meaning sports books believe he's 10 times more likely. Then Allen, but Allen has received 23% of the total bets for 2020 NFL MVP to this point. And the next closest is Arizona's Kyler Murray at 30 to one odds for 14% of the bets. And I, and I know you're, you're a poker guy. And I, I think you're also Mackie, you're, you, you have to definitely know how the odds work for, for bets and whatnot. Yeah. So people are definitely looking at Allen and Kyler Murray. It's as a value, not the they're, favorite. Val they're value bets. If they win, they're going to get a great payout. Right. So yeah. I get that. So that begs the question though. Can Kirk Cousins win NFL MVP? So I have a list here, Judd, from mm -hmm. CBS Sports of all the odds rankings, and Declan has a list too. And and the same is true on the CBS Sports list in that Josh Allen, in terms of odds to win, not like percentage of bets placed, but odds to win MVP is ahead of Kirk Cousins. He's a plus 4,000 ahead of Ben Roethlisberger, Zeke Elliott, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, and then it goes Kirk Cousins into Phillip Rivers, Matthew Stafford, Ryan Tannehill, on down the list. Okay. I mean, that feels a little bit disrespectful. Like Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Josh Allen. Derek Henry is ahead of him. And I get that he had a great year as a running back. Right. Jimmy Garoppolo is ahead of him. Well, let's start today seconding this by saying um, that I firmly believe the Buffalo Bills right now are too hot of commodity. Like, I think a lot of people love the Bills. And, yeah, Stefan Diggs could help. Uh, and the Bills very well might be an improving team and product, but I, it's almost like they've taken the step now of, oh, the Bills are going to be fantastic, yeah. and Josh Allen, you know, with with Diggs is is going to all of a sudden be the most accurate quarterback, and that's not going to happen. So I don't know if the Josh Allen part of this equation is so much a knock or a, or a a um, put down of Kirk Cousins' abilities. I think it's more of there's far too much hype around that team. And they might be great. I don't know, but I need to see that. I and I need to see w way more. And Josh Allen to me remains an athletic, inaccurate quarterback who I wouldn't trust. So I don't know that I'm going to put it in the Cousins bin and say this is a, a this is some type of detriment of Kirk Cousins. So much as I'm going to say, I think there's way too much hype overall regarding the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I agree with your Buffalo Bills take. I And listen, Stefan Diggs, if they target Stefan Diggs in Buffalo the way that other top receivers get targeted, he's going to put up ridiculous numbers, but and he, he will help Josh An uh, Allen. Is he'll, Allen going to hit him? He'll, he'll hit him 90 or 100 times. Like, Stefan Diggs is going to catch 90 Right, passes. but he's going to sail passes at times. Un unless he comes back a different QB, I still think that there's problems with his game. I agree. Like, what I'm saying is Stefan Diggs will make Josh Allen better, but he's not going to make an MVP better. My My... I'm I'm just trying to think like why would Josh Allen be the hottest commodity bet for MVP? Part of its value if 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 betters think well, what is he 30 to 1 or whatever like all right uh we think Josh Allen wins the MVP based on XYZ uh more than 1 in 30 times then you could see savvy betters placing that bet. And they're probably looking at 
a division that no longer includes Tom Brady. And so if you, if you look at some of the ingredients for what an MVP is in the NFL, it's almost always a quarterback, a, a team that usually wins the division and is, you know, a go, you know, 11 and five, 12 and four record. And so could the Buffalo bills with a weak divisional schedule, mostly a weaker schedule across the board. If you look at it, could, if he takes a step forward and they win the division, like there's all kinds of things that could prop him up in this race. Mm hmm. But my question is, all right, if Josh Allen is getting all this potential MVP consideration, at least in terms of like underdogs, well, then shouldn't Kirk Cousins potentially be in this mix? And now he lost one of his biggest weapons in Stefan Diggs, and I get that. But but Kirk Cousins checks a lot of the boxes for what a potential MVP quarterback could look like. I would never put him in the favorite list with Pat Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. He is, you know, Russell Wilson. He's not on that level. but when you talk about high completion percentage, big time fantasy stats too, like fantasy stats kind of matter with MVP. Like if you have a bunch of touchdown passes or if you have a bunch of rushing yards, like you're, you know, was Lamar Jackson the best quarterback in the NFL last year? To me, no, I think Russell Wilson was better. I think Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes in a shortened season, when he could play with more impactful. and Mahomes probably wins it if he plays the full season. Right. But Lamar Jackson with a great offensive line and a great scheme, like all these things played into him putting up bigger numbers. And he's, he's absolutely one of the five best quarterbacks in the NFL, but mm -hmm. you know, cousins, one of the best completion percentage guys in the NFL, ordinarily over 4,000 yards. He's not a guy that throws a bunch of interceptions except late in the game against green Bay, which uh, maybe you can avoid that this year. But I, I actually think that like, it is not that outlandish. If the, if the Vikings, if, if Kirk cousins can throw, a few more touchdown passes than the, you know, 25 to 30 he ordinarily throws. If you can get him up in that like 34, 35 range uh -huh. by just swapping out some rushing touchdowns for passing touchdowns in the red zone, which they will do, his numbers all of a sudden look more MVP caliber. So I would not call it crazy to put him in that mix. If the Vikings are going to be good enough uh, to, to have a player in serious consideration for the MVP award, I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be Dalvin Cook, though. Mm. So if they so so let's say the Vikings go gangbusters. All right. Let's say they win 13 games and they're just they far exceed the expectations of th those of us, at least on this show. I think that if you were to cast the ballot for MVP off of that season, it's Dalvin Cook. And then there's a gap and then Cousins. So I, I guess in, in this conversation, I find it hard to believe that Kirk Cousins would be the MVP, despite the fact that he could put up good stats. Because the way this offense is going to run would be so much predicated on Dalvin Cook's success. And if they win 13 games, that means Cook probably didn't get hurt. That means he caught a ton of passes, um, that, that he scored touchdowns rushing-wise and had a great year on the ground. So I would go with, in this conversation, the fact that I don't think it can be Cousins because I think it would have to be Cook, given how the Vikings run that up. But see, here's the counterpoint to that. And there might even be a counterpoint to my counterpoint here, but... The counterpoint to that would be in the last 15 years, only one running back has won the MVP award, and it was Adrian Peterson in 2012. Right. And if you look back at the last 20 years since 2000, only four running backs have won the MVP award. Yep. And I'm going to list these guys' names and think about like the, the these are some of the most prominent running backs of the last 20 years at their absolute peak. And as we think about Dalvin Cook's consideration potentially, and he is I don't even think he's on this list. He's much. Let me see here. Uh, he's he's a plus ten thousand. So if you go down this list, it's I'm on CBSSports.com. Kirk Cousins, Philip Rivers, Matthew Stafford, Ryan Tannehill, Cam Newton, Alvin Kamara, Joe Burrow, Tua Tagovailoa. Cam Newton's still not signed. Nick Foles, <laughs> Daniel Jones, Jared Goff, Josh Jacobs, Nick Bosa, and then Dalvin Cook and Jameis Winston have the same odds, sure. which is interesting. Um, but the four running backs that have won the MVP award since 2000 are Marshall Falk in 2000 mm -hmm. at sort of that's sort of the peak and the tipping point of the greatest show on turf. Sean Alexander in 2005 with the Seahawks once scored four touchdowns in one half against the Vikings. Different game correct. at that time, too, for sure. LaDainian Tomlinson in 2006 and then Adrian Peterson in 2012. So could Dalvin Cook at his best be on the like these guys all in those seasons were just flat regarded as the best running backs in the NFL having their best seasons. Yep. Could Dalvin Cook, if he plays 16 games, be in that category, especially the way the Vikings might look to use him? I don't think that's outlandish either. Like if he plays 16 games, could he be regarded as the best running back? Yeah. The counterpoint 
MVP wise to your counterpoint off that is I, I think I think you're probably right. The ship has sailed and this has now become fair or not. And it's probably not fair quarterback award. Um, so I would say the problem would be if the Vikings win 13 games and I vote for Cook, he's not going to win it, but I'm going to take away the Cousins votes. And so it's going to be a quarterback still, mm -hmm. but it's 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 to me going to be very difficult if this offense runs efficiently the way it's supposed to run, it's going to be very difficult to get Cousins votes because I think Cook would take away his votes and not win the award, but another quarterback sure. then would win the award. So really, like, if, if Dalvin Cook gets injured, which he normally does, it actually, then maybe Kirk Cousins carries more of the load. But here's, here's another thing to look at. Um, if you look at the history of the MVP award in the NFL, mm -hmm. It was it was very much a 50-50 running back quarterback split for a long time in the in the 70s you had an AFC and an NFC MVP and then in 1980 you had just an NFL MVP and it was a couple of quarterbacks in the early 80s then inexplicably the kicker for Washington won the MVP in 1980 we talked about that yeah it's fantastic and then we alternated running back quarterback Lawrence Taylor in 1986 as a as a defensive player won the MVP um, a run of quarterbacks in the late eighties, but then Thurman Thomas won it in 91. Emmett Smith won it in 93. Mm -hmm. You had Barry Sanders, Trell Davis into Marshall Falk. It was, it was kind of a 50, 50 split, but in the last 20 years, it's been a 75, 25 quarterback lean. And so, you know, Kirk cousins at his best is a top 10 quarterback, which if you're a quarterback and you're top 10 and your team is winning, you're automatically in the mix here. But if I start to list the quarterbacks that have won the MVP award, it's a different type of elite. Like it, it's not when you look at this list, like Matt Ryan is probably the only one that would give you hope. Matt Ryan won the MVP in 2016 mm -hmm. and he's not like, he's not Tom Brady. He's really, really good. And if insulated with great weapons and a great system and great coordinators, his numbers can elevate and he can win an MVP. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be like the Kirk cousins goal of, can you put together a Matt Ryan 2016 season? Otherwise it's Tom Brady three times. It's Peyton Manning five times. It's Aaron Rodgers twice. Pat Mahomes. Lamar Jackson's a totally different type of quarterback with the mobility. Um, and then you go back into the late 90s, and it's like Rich Gannon had a pop-up year in 2002, I guess. Yep. So you could. It's a different game at that point, though. Like the, I, I'd say that that the game has evolved now to a point where where the Gannons can win it, but it's become way more difficult. I, mm -hmm. I would say if the Vikings play like they're supposed to play stylistically um, offensively and defensively. And again, back to my point of let's say they win 13 games. I'm guessing my MVP ballot, just total guess would probably be Dalvin cook one, Daniil Hunter two, Kirk cousins three. Cause if they win 13 games defensively, they, they have achieved way more than we think that they're capable of right now. And, and if Hunter emerges uh, sans Griffin, and just continues to have, you know, rack up 13 sacks seasons. It's going to be hard to overlook that. So I would just guessing, I, I would say that the MVP ballot, which would take away votes from Kirk would be uh, Dalvin, Daniil Hunter, then cousins. You know, the Vikings have, if you go back to the early seventies, um, since 1970, only two defensive players have won the MVP. Alan Page and Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. So it, it has happened before, but in a totally different era. Yeah, of NFL it'd be football. hard, hard pressed to have I mean, happen, no. Daniil Hunter would literally have to have like, like the perception would have to be and the reality that defense drove the Vikings to a 13 win season and that Daniil Hunter like broke the sack record. Yeah, it'd have to right? be a huge. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they would have to finish with the number one seed because Daniil Hunter was the leader of the best defense in the sure. NFL. And but if they get 13 win. wins and and the way that they play their game. I think Cousins would absolutely be very important, but I don't know that he would be considered the most important person. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Hit us up in the comment section on youtube.com slash score north and click that subscribe button as we look to uh, keep pumping out daily Viking stuff here on score north purple daily, the podcast on Apple, Spotify and score We appreciate you hanging out.